Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Fit to Print. Fit to Print is one of the new games that were just released from Flat Out Games and AEG. Designed by Peter McPherson. Artwork by Ian O'Toole, which is why it's so gorgeous. Plays, I don't know, let's see. One to six players. 15 to 30 minutes, age is 10 plus. So, that's kind of it. Effectively what you're doing in this game, I'm not even going to read the rule book because I know what the theme is. You are laying out a paper. You are in the newspaper business. And you are reporting, collecting stories, ads, photos to make the best weekend paper that you can. But there is a deadline. You have a certain amount of time to do that and you need to do it better and more effectively than everybody else. That's the theme. So this is a real-time game. Real-time spatial manipulation game about putting tile, collecting tiles, putting them on a grid without being able to place them and hoping that they fit without having a bunch of leftover tiles, because that's bad. That's it, that sounds like a whole lot, and it is a whole lot. So if you wanna see how it works, click on the link in the video description and you can uh, see a, a round of playthrough and I'll talk about the game a little, in a little more detail. Otherwise, let's move on to the components. All right, so the components in this are really nice. Like I said earlier, it's, it's Eno Tool Art, so, you know, that should go without saying, but let's talk about some of the other components. This is the newspaper board. It's double-sided. There's Sunday. You have Friday and Saturday on the other side. That's where all the magic happens with placing tiles. You have these awesome desks with cool, every desk has different stuff on top of it. You have to put these together. That's where you sit your tiles. It could have just been a flat thing on the ground, but it's cooler being an actual desk. It's more thematic. Adorable little characters for the special powers. I love that. Uh, if you don't want to play with the special powers, you can just have that. But it looks like a press badge, which is fantastic. I think that's super clever. Um, all these cards for the days, the special advanced actions are all the same art. So that's kind of a miss. It's this adorable little character here. But it's still good to look at. Um, stopwatch is cool. Now let's look at some of the tiles. So the pictures are fantastic. And I think everything is different. I don't know that for sure, but I think everything is different. So here's a couple pictures. I think I had these because I at least showed them in a video if you watch that. Here's another picture with a fantastic lion. Most of them score in a similar way. They're just different sizes and different pictures. Uh, they want to be next to certain things to score. All the ads have this orange and red color going on and they have the ad revenue at the bottom. So the bigger they are, the more money they are worth because they're more expensive. Uh, the articles, like I showed you in the overview, if you watch that, they have a color. If you can't see the color or have colorblind issues, there's an icon down in the corner. There's green, blue, and pink. They have a mood, which is the little cat faces, and they have some points. So every article is gonna have some kind of different information. Um, like that. Here's a bigger green one. They're just different sizes. And one thing I didn't show you, which we'll talk about later, but if some reason you're breaking the rules when you're placing, you can flip the tile over to this side and it'll stay on the board to eliminate some white space, but it's not going to be scoring. It's just going to be blank text. It doesn't matter. The tiles are fantastic quality too. They're real thick. Um, easy to tell apart. The different sizes are easy. The orientation, you can tell by the back which way it goes because you look at the words. Um, fantastic. The production is top notch. This box is incredible. The rule book is great. I just read through it once, learned how to play. I guess there's some variants in the back that talk about if you don't want to play in real time or all that thing. Looks like teams, family mode, turn-based, which I feel like would take too long. Um, so real-time is probably the way it is, but again, I haven't played it non-real-time. But square, laid out, great, love it. So components, no issues, top-notch as always from Flat Out and AEG. So with all that being said, let's talk about what we think about the game. So this is a real-time game, and that's not normally my bag. And by normally my bag, I mean 
I despise it. Whenever there's a real-time element in a game, I usually run far, far away, and I'm just not interested. So when I saw that in this rule book, it made me want to stop playing. But then we gave it a shot. We did it on the slow time. First game was, whoa. First game is rough. It was rough. Then we played it immediately again a second time. And we all understood it a little bit better. So I'd look at the first round as maybe just a, a learning game. And then if you want to play it again, go into it because you're going to understand how it works. You'll understand the sizes of the tiles, what they look like on the grid and all that kind of thing. So the real time, while it should have scared me away, it didn't. It makes sense in this one. You have five minutes. If you're playing the easy game, that's five minutes. That's more than enough time. Usually there were a couple times when time ran out and I didn't collect one of those uh, printing tokens, but it doesn't happen all the time. You may, if you're having some real big trouble or you have too many tiles, like you didn't pay attention to how many tiles you could take and you have too many tiles and you're trying to make the best layout that you can, you may run out of time, but it, it's a, it just adds a little bit of stress. I think otherwise, if you had all the time in the world, you can just look at these tiles and put that down. Oh, I really like that picture. I don't know. I don't feel good about that. I could go look at this one. No, if there was no time limit, you could be drafting tiles for hours. That's hyperbole, but at least five, 10 minutes of just drafting tiles. Then you still have to place them on your board. And I think the game could outstay its welcome if you eliminated the time. But real time, I hate it. In this, it worked for me weirdly. I liked it. I it, This is a game that... It has a couple things that I don't like. I don't love that you have to place tiles down without being able to place them to check out the placement first. I don't love that, so I'm like eyeballing it. Like, well, I think you can catch your rows. Like, there's like eight rows here, so I know this one is four wide, so I can fit two of those this way. And the more you play it, you're going to understand the placement, how big each tile is, and how many squares on the grid that it's going to take up. Because that's very important. You can think you have space for something, you're one column too short or the tile is one column too wide. It's it's painful if you don't understand the shape of the grid. So I'm not good with that spatial manipulation stuff. And I really hate real time, like more than you know. I've played maybe three real time games ever. And that's three more than I probably should have played. This being one of them. Had I known it was real time, probably wouldn't have played it, probably wouldn't be doing this video. That's how much I despise real time. But even in spite of those things that I don't like, I still had a good time playing this game. I lost horribly the first game. I didn't do any ad revenue. Uh, the second time, I spent all my time focusing on ad revenue, and I still did horribly. I played terribly, absolutely wretched, but I had fun doing it. And again, the game is 30 minutes, 15 minutes of rounds, and then you know some cleanup, some scoring, 30 to 45 minutes. I mean, if it goes any longer than that, speed it up. I mean, that's lit really it. It's not. It's a simple game, simple placement rules. The only hard part is uh, you can get a little bit of AP when you're placing on your board, but that's why you had the time. Otherwise, it could be a little little bit of a puzzle. So I like this game. It's fun. It's going to get a BGM except the seal. It's going to get a 7 out of 10. Had it not been real time, maybe a little higher, but the real times are bringing it down a little bit. So 7 out of 10 on BGG, which is a 3.5 out of 5 wrenches on our arbitrary wrench scale. That means absolutely nothing. But with that ticket, the games that we enjoy, and that's what I'm going to do. So... That is fit to print from Flat Out Games and AEG. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and as always, keep gaming.